Good morning, and it's Dee from No Better Do Better. Uh, welcome back. I uh, hope you've been enjoying the videos. So today I'm going to talk about uh, the correlation between encopresis and nighttime wetting. Uh, it's a question that was posed to me by, um, by someone following the Facebook page, Amy. Uh, hopefully this will help. And if you have a question that you would specifically like uh, dealt with or answered that you sort of haven't seen any answers to yet, uh, feel free to go to No Better Do Better on Facebook and just Put a, put a post on there and ask a question. Now I won't, I will say I'm not an expert in nighttime wetting with relation to encopresis uh, as such. We still have issues with nighttime wetting, uh, but I think that's partly enco, but also partly uh, that my child is a very, very deep sleeper. So that's one thing to look at your, your child as well as if it's possibly not just enco related. I do know that we have more accidents um, the more I feel like my, my, my son has backed up uh, and we are then due to, to sort of clean out and, and get that all moving again. And when that happens, we have less accidents. A good resource to, to check out for wetting in general, whether it be nighttime or daytime, is um, the website of a, uh, a doctor, Dr. Steve Hodges, who's a paediatric urologist. His website is uh, all the W's, it's no accident.net. You'll find some amazing information on there and not just to do with um, enuresis, which is daytime wetting, uh, but also, you know, the correlation between wetting in general and, and constipation and how that all works. He has some great books uh, that will also explain to your child, basically called it's, it's no accident and explaining that there is something going on in their body which causes, you know, wetting accidents. What you more commonly see in Enco kids is perhaps um, small wet patches in their in their underwear. Um, some of them will have a big wee accident, but essentially that can be sort of two different things, um, all the same thing at the same time. But uh, a lot of it is to do with when you've got a full colon, that colon runs right next to that bladder. Now the small wet patches is, tends to be, um, I believe, the the impacted fecal matter or the full colon rubbing on the bladder and irritating it. And when that happens, um, they leak small amounts of wee. Uh, the potential is, is if they're withholding poo um, and they're getting that sensation, it's possible that they're withholding their wee as well. And that leaking is just them trying to hold it in and it's coming out, but it's still related to having a full colon and a bladder. Um, in colon hydrotherapy, what I found is, um, and this is also just to reinforce that idea that it is fecal matter or poo, pushing on that bladder is when you get through a, a colon hydrotherapy session, uh, you, the water slowly, slowly, slowly sort of gets further and further along the colon. And I've found that at a certain point, it really does start to stimulate that bladder feeling and feeling like you need to, to do a wee. So I can imagine that that is what that is sort of doing in, in children. So with those wee accidents and at night, you've got to rule out, you know, um, the deep sleeping child as well. It could be both. Uh, there's no hard and fast. This this condition is partly about knowing your child and understanding what they're doing. Uh, you know, late nighttime toilet training in males ran in um, my my husband's side of the family. So, um, you know, we have that as well as uh, the encopresis and the impaction sort of side of things that we assess. So it's it's something that you should be looking at as well. Um, if your child isn't a heavy sleeper, uh, like my child, I, I think he wakes up, but then he just ignores it and goes back to sleep. Um, it's, it's just that rousing them out of sleep. There are some continence programs. Um, Ozcare in Australia run a continence program that can help with nighttime wedding alarms to help them uh, train them to get up uh, and go to the toilet. Um, there's different different you know programs on the internet. We haven't gone there yet. Uh, I'm just I'm still hoping it's going to resolve due to the deep sleep aspect of, of, of our situation. So I know it's not a hard and fast answer, but hopefully from a physical point of view, um, understanding that an impacted or full colon can stimulate that bladder, can also reduce bladder size, uh, therefore making the bladder not hold as much during the night. So if your child's not getting themselves up to go to the toilet for a wee, then that can cause those accidents. So absolutely check out it's no accident .net, uh, dot yeah, no, it's no accident.net um, because that's it's just a whole lot more information about your child's body and how that, that is working with all of this. And uh, very, very smart man. Um, I'll quickly tell you about um, 
something I found very interesting on his website and it is the relationship between constipation and wetting and uh, Dr. Hodges had, he did a study of 50 of his child clients and he gave a uh, questionnaire to every parent of those children assessing whether or not they, the parent felt that their child could be constipated and every single one of them said no, no, child's not constipated, poos every day, everything's all good. Uh, he went on then to, this is interesting, this is about the efficiency of palpitating the abdomen when your GP or your paediatrician gives a bit of a feeling of, oh no, I can't feel anything. Well, he palpitated the abdomen of all 50 children and could not in any of them feel any particular obvious mass. Uh, he then went on to x-ray every single child and every one of those 50 children had an impacted fecal mass within them somewhere. Uh, so next time when your doctor goes, oh no, I can't feel anything, think twice about whether or not it's giving you the big picture. Um, I know my own, uh, our own paediatrician did the same thing. Um, when we first went with my son and he felt around, he goes, oh, you know, there's a little bit in there, but I can't really feel much. And due to the fact that this continued and continued, I went back and I said, you know what, we need an X-ray. And when we did the X-ray, he was completely full from his uh, rectum all the way up, right underneath, up and under his rib cage. So, um, from a diagnostic point of view, but I learned that from, from Dr. Hodge's website as to, you know, it's, it's all information, um, but really fascinating. You know, 50 kids um, whose parents would tell you they're, they're not constipated. Um, every single one of them were. So the correlation between wetting and constipation is a very, very close one. Uh, so hopefully that has answered some more questions and can help some of you out. And um, thanks for the question, Amy. Hopefully that's, you know, helped you a bit. Uh, so until next time, uh, I'm Dee from Know Better Do Better. Ugh, know Better Do Better. <laughs> and um, have a lovely day. Bye.